Oh, okay. we'll catch up with you. All right, I'd like to call to order the policy committee meeting, April 15th, morning all board members are here, Andy. Um, I would like approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I do not have any public comments. And so we'll get right into the policy. I'll generally Randy. All right, we're gonna start off. These are all HR policies. Um, Brian joins us. He can help out with any questions that we have. First one is just employment um, references and verification. It's really the process that we can go through with that. Um, Brian has reviewed these and um, our recommendation is to approve the, the newer policy that's put forth by WASB. Yeah. All right. Any questions on that one? The next one is this professional staff positions. Um, I think this is just, and you'll see a few of these through there. Ted Bryan and Rebecca and I talked about them as we went through the first review. They're really just kind of talking about, they really don't have a lot of policy implication. They're more of a statement, but we decided at this point we would just keep them in there. It's just talking about professional staff positions. That's really like teaching positions, et cetera. When you look at that, uh, you know, there's been some uh, comment about uh, not having a license in teaching and so forth. Is that covered? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it actually gets covered in the next one. The next one is professional staff licensure. This is actually called PI 34. Um, this is, uh, again, just kind of articulates kind of what your, this is your licensure and, and also your kind of part of the evaluation piece. Um, it's a combination of, it used to be PI 3 and PI 4, which are kind of guidelines in, and I, I believe it's DPI or administrative rules. It just articulates kind of what we have to do to implement PI 34. So that's kind of language that means something to us, maybe doesn't to the public, but it um, basically just talks about our licensure pieces. Any sort of licensure modifications would then fall under, it would either fall underneath this, Jack, or it would fall under some other piece of legislation, um, which would then um, be in effect. And I think what we have is the one. Um, I think our thought with the next one is with regards to, since we do follow PI 34, there's actually some administrative rules here. And our thought on this one is that those aren't really any longer. So we would actually recommend just deleting the rule associated with 531.1. Licensure renewal right now um, doesn't have a lot to do with college credit. It has a, it's a whole different process. So this really doesn't, and it falls kind of under the general rules of PI 34. So we don't feel we need that. And anyone who is working in the professional space um, should know what those are in our HR departments. Mm -hmm. So our recommendation would be to repeal that. And the next one is 532 negotiations legal status. Um, and I believe what we're looking at is just a modification of our current policy. And what we're taking off is anything with the, the grievance process is already associated with, we have, there's a separate grievance process that's, that's in place for all employees. That's just um, part of state law. Um, that was kind of an, a, a piece after Act 10 that there was now a grievance process that applied to teachers and every employee that was more part of the um, just labor laws. We also are just taking off the reference, the cross reference to the WTA contract because that really doesn't speak to this item. We really don't have necessarily, our contract is really limited by um, 
really the base wage negotiations is really what the contract is. He says everything else is handbook related. As long as we have a, a an association, we should have that contract. Um, 532.1. Um, again, it's very similar to the one we just talked about. It does talk about negotiations. As long as we have a bargaining unit, we should have the this policy. And as we have reviewed it, we agree that we should just keep our current policy in this area. You get that uh, one from the Teachers Association. Is there any other association that could take over the bargaining? As far as for teachers or for yeah, um, there's a couple different teachers um, unions out there, um, but no, this they're tied in with with WEA, so I don't see them going with why well, can I forget what the other one is? Jack's question is there any other association teachers could affiliate with other than the W WEA? There's the uh, I was. Blanking on what the other teachers' union is nationally. AFL. Yeah, that's it. American Association Federation of Teachers. I don't think I there's don't, very I think few. So. That I mean, are I, I think I've heard of one teachers' union affiliating with like a uh, the same one that hourly folks would tie into, but I guess uh, the one key teachers' association, they would be an association that would act as such. Right. Yeah. Well, and this is really for like local negotiations. And I don't know if they would need to associate at a national level or at a state level if they wanted to negotiate. They could just decide to do it as a, this is really just the local, is really what they're talking about here. So they're going to associate as a, associate themselves as the official bargaining unit for the teachers, is really what they're establishing when they do their annual um, election. So, like these, like you mentioned, I mean, I don't know the status of the WTA, but if their affiliation went away, this policy, we're stating that it's it probably could. Them. Correct. Yeah, if, if there wasn't an association, the need for some of the contract negotiation policies probably wouldn't need to be there. But they have an annual opportunity to read. I would probably I'm just want to rewrite the, the policy uh, that would state if there's an interest association make it more broad to a bargain right or something that's a good point but if if that were dissolved or went away then yeah who's in its place what are your thoughts on that brian they're looking at can you bring that one up it doesn't matter what's that it doesn't matter i mean this is all statutorily driven anyway yeah so, so really what what they're what you're talking about is in that first sentence you know, the board of education select a bargaining agent for the per just like a bargaining agent for the purpose of negotiating with any it is a organized employee, association. An employees association. Yeah, we can do that. What are you saying? You're just employee. getting making it more general. So any I'll write it. Oh. Any employee or any employees. Well, it would it would be any of our employee groups could be meeting. Any bargain, yeah, right, something like that. Yep, yep, got it. That's a good change. All right, we're on to 533 recruitment and hiring of professional employees. And what we are looking to do. There's a few edits that Brian had entered into this one, but we are looking to replace our current, we're looking to replace it with our, our PRG version. Um, I think where you have some of the yellow highlights, we're adding in Director of Human Resources. And And the only other thing we had was under the ask. Can we just pull that one up, please, Rebecca? Go to the last page of it, or the second to last page. Um, right there on the bottom with the asterisk, it's just that we'll have the, the um, 
criminal background check done before the recommendation comes to the Board of Education. So basically, E says that we have the discretion to approve or disapprove anybody we want, right? Or it's fully discretion approved for the employment of the candidate and conditions of this proposed employment contract. We just assume it's all been looked at by you guys. Right. And but if we this this would refer specifically to people that are under a contract, which would just be teachers, admin support, and but I mean when, when but yes. we, we approve everybody, we could pick somebody out and say no. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes you could. I mean every contract is technically with the board. But yeah. Okay. So yeah, every Board teacher contract, every administrative contract, those are actually agreements between the government entity and the individual. And that's why you've got the asterisks that we've expected you to check them all out. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's just, it, it kind of works, but you don't want to approve someone's contract if they if they haven't met the contingencies up to that point. Yeah. Like a, C, a criminal background check would be obviously one licensure. You know, the biggest two, obviously. Yep, and the next policy, 533.1, is criminal background checks. Um, and again, we're looking to replace, uh, adopt the PRG version. I think, Brian, you've gone through and added the items um, related to, to that work, really directs it through the human resources director and, and department. I think Ted had a question just kind of how we do background checks. Can you give like uh, the 30 second version of what our background check process looks like? Yeah, we, we contract our background checks to a company called Fidelitech, which is uh, out of Verona. It's used by uh, a number of the area school districts. Um, it's the same background check for an employee and a volunteer. In, inclusive of that, they have to give their consent uh, to have it occur. Uh, they uh, they also notify them what their rights are per the statutes or, or federal laws that kind of come with it. Um, report comes back to us. I think there's four or five areas that are monitored. Um, you know, they look within this, they look with you know, locally, county, state, and uh, and federal uh, databases um, comes back to us as a report. Um, with, you know, it's either a green flag in each area or a red flag. A red flag just means there's an activity uh, or something to note there. Uh, those reports, then, if someone needs flag, then it comes to me for my review to see what that is uh, and if there's a relationship to their employment. And then um, after that, it's uh, I formally approve anyone that's been flagged with a note, and it goes on process. Did they, oh, go ahead. Did they have to be fingerprinted, everybody, or not? Uh, for a background check, no. It, it's uh, they've got to provide um, social security number, identif you know, uh, identifying information, um, and. For licensure uh, in the state of Wisconsin, it, that answer would be because there's also for people that, and teachers and administrators that are licensed by the state of Wisconsin, they are also criminally background checked. Uh, and they, if you have lived out of state, you do have to be fingerprinted. If you have not, you, you don't. Just my son bringing it up. I was, I didn't know if all background checks were the same. So, and it sounds like they're, they're the ones doing it. If something, you know, were discovered that they missed, it's really their responsibility. Uh, they're on the hook for it. Correct. I mean, yeah, in terms of liability, right. yes, they would, there would you know, I'm something went wrong. I would guess that we would be probably pursuing something in terms of liability legally against them. You said there it's the employee. The background, the background, the fidelity, all that, 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 no one does stuff. Do we have any drug testing in here? Uh, we, we do not. The only uh, employee group that has drug testing as a component to that is if we employ our own bus drivers, then we would have to have 
we'd have to have a drug testing policy, but as a because we contract that out, that's the responsibility of the members. So that was 533.1. Um, the next one is substitute professional staff employment. Um, we're just making some minor edits to it, but keeping our current policy. This is generally for substitute teachers. Um, just changing. We don't really have a substitute caller anymore. We have a substitute coordinator. And then just uh, articulating really more accurately kind of the, the bottom part with regards to pay. And then it's on a per diem basis as determined by the board. <clears throat> next one is 535.21. This is with regards to coaches. The recommendation is um, the PRG does not have a sample policy of this. The recommendation was to keep our current policy. Um, Brian and um, Nick Conrad have both taken a look through this and they have made some edits and particularly Nick made some edits to it. So with those, um, we're comfortable keeping our current policy with the uh, recommended um, changes. Five thirty five point three is professional staff promotions. This is one I again that we took a look at and agreed to keep our current policy but we took off reference to the WTA contract because that doesn't play a part in any part of um, emotions within the staff. Maybe the next one's where I slipped in the telework. Oh, and I don't know if I have that on your, on your spreadsheet. I have it on the post that's All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, the next one is 535.4 and, and, and the rule associated rule. This is one that we did that we had a policy on that we really put together over the COVID time frame when we had a lot of people working on telework. Um, the PRG does have a sample policy for telework and we felt that it was important that we kind of update and adopt the policy um, that, that they've put forth. Um, Brian has gone through and made edits to it to make it more congruent with some of our thoughts on telework. We don't have a, a lot of this within our system, but we felt that it should be something that we have as a um, as a policy um, moving forward. Um, certainly, when we look at at most of our teaching positions, there you're teaching in an, in an in person environment. Um, there are some districts, as you look around the state, that may have somebody who's teaching a fully virtual course, so that might fit in there. It also might be something that fits more in like the kind of like the administrative administrative assistant role or some role of that nature, which doesn't have necessarily face to face contact. And are there situations where telework may be appropriate at different times? So this is the policy that would govern that. But I think Brian, you even shared right now. I'm not sure we have anybody on specific telework currently we do not right it, it typically is it's been related to um i think it almost exclusively this year to treat people with a medical temporary medical situations that, that don't have student responsibilities um, supervision responsibilities and we made an agreement with them to continue to do some parts of their work at home if they're able to. and then i mean they're all temporary uh, we don't have any work Excuse me. We don't have anyone who's signed to work. So if uh, you get into a school or whatever, their home is their office. We require them to uh, come into uh, school to stay in the school. If if we assigned that as their only work site, yes, they would. We they'd be eligible for mileage. Um, that's why any agreement uh, that we would make with individuals would make it a hybrid, which would mean that this is also this and home or work sites. And so then if it's a hybrid agreement, it's uh, driving from home to here as part of the commute. But if that's their job, if their job is assigned to their home, 
um, anywhere that they would travel as a responsibility of their job, which would include coming here or going to the Dells or going to wherever it would be a uh, mile ago. Thanks, Brian. The next item is 536. This is actually really dealing with more COBRA laws and termination of employment. Um, the recommendation that we have in this area is targeted to lead to this policy out. Um, this is actually tied to, to law um, and something that Brian and his staff uh, deal with just as part of any separations of employment type situations and our communication with that. But then the need for having this policy, and you can see some of the notes from, from Barry Forbes with regards to it, um, we feel it's best just to re repeal the policy. Next one is 529. This is with regards to employee discipline. Um, taking a look at our current policy and also the recommendation from WASB, we're looking to adopt the PRG version of this policy. Um, Brian has taken a look at it and um, it lines up with, uh, with the practices and the, and the rules that we need to follow with regards to employee discipline. Next. <clears throat> Next item is with regards to health and dental insurance, early retirement. PRG does not offer a sample policy on this, and Brian has, you want to pull that one up? Thank you. And Brian has taken a look at this policy and made a few edits to incorporate current language and practices. Can you talk about that just a second, Brian? Stewart? Sure. Um, well, again, the first thing is just strike out the word early. Uh, all of our retirement language is tied around age. Um, someone has you know, that age corresponds to the age for retirement in the state system, which is 55. Um, and then within the, the original strike part, part that we struck there, 15 years. Um, that was something that the board had moved, uh, approved of moving away from in the handbooks, um, maybe one of my first years as the HR director. And so um, what we now do is we recognize that someone has to complete a full year of service with us. And to get to the full retirement uh, package, they, they gain 10% per year. So if you work for one year, you get 10% of the retirement contributions you're eligible to keep. If you work for five years, you're at 50%. If you work for eight years, you're at 80%. And once you get to a 10th year, completing a 10th year, then all of the retirement contributions that the district has made are yours to keep and would travel with you regardless of when you would stop working for us. Um, and then the second part is, is just management practice. You know, they at age sixty five, they're they're able to to tap into uh, Medicare as opposed to being our our. Yeah, we're just gonna we'll keep our current policy with the edits that that Brian is recommending there. The next item we have is five thirty six point five retirement of staff members. It just says we have no compulsory age for retirement. It's really a pretty straightforward policy. And their recommendation is just to keep it. Why would you need it? You know if that means you have benefits to it. Um, I, I think it's it's probably more of a protection from a you know an age discrimination claim. You know that that someone could say you're you know you're forcing me out because you, you know, and this would just be a statement to say, well, Mac, I would say, you know, we, we don't actually require anyone to retire at a certain age and you can continue to work as long as you can. 
meet the requirements of the job. <laughs> Next item is with regards to professional organizations. Um, this is, again, we're removing the WTA contract re um, reference and then just adding um, supervisor approval. So generally, when you look at professional organizations, and Brian and I belong to both of ours. This is for the HR directors, mine are for the superintendents. Ours are kind of directed by our contracts as well. But you also have teachers who may want to be part of the Wisconsin State um, math association or the science association or the ag association this system provides policy and guidance as far as that supervisor approval is specific to the last policies we're addressing this morning are with regards to professional staff evaluation um, you will see that we are uh, adopting the prg version Brian has gone through and made a few edits with regards to indications directing us to our employee handbook. Uh, I think that was a piece that was we reviewed this with Barry Forbes that we wanted to make sure that that was adequate because we do have um, specific information regarding um, the evaluation pieces within the handbook. So it really directs it there. Um, and then the subsequent exhibit is more specific to head coaches. And again, Brian and Nick have taken a look at that. Um, this one actually um, aligns very well with the coaches policy we saw earlier, but we've kept it here under evaluation just for consistency purposes. And because we approve all the handbooks, any changes really are coming from the board anyway, right? Right. right. So I always consider our handbooks when we approve those. I mean, they're not the numeric policies like we're going through here, but any action of the board has policy implication so that those are pieces that we can utilize as part of our implementation process. <clears throat> those are all of our policies for this morning. Be happy to answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, I think there's the one policy that we made a few edits with, which regards to the teachers' association. Teachers, the associations. We'll, we'll make that edit. We're looking to them just to look for a motion to move these forward to the full board of May. And I just made a comment and our evaluation or looking at them about the head coach evaluation. Does yeah. You know, nothing really changes in this policy, but, you know, a written evaluation will be done on a yearly basis. I imagine our our processes have kind of changed over what's happened the last year plus with certain. Yeah, so um, taking it back approximately, you know, a year and a half, that's when we uh, had found that the evaluations were not consistently being completed. Last year, uh, they were for all head coaches. Um, and then this year we have continued to that uh, to do that. All have been done to this point, uh, at least fall and winter, spring are in session. Um, and then the the we you know we continue to store those in two places, uh, the athletic director's office, you know, because that's who's creating them. But then also then a copy comes here so that they can be go they can go into personnel files for those coaches. Yeah, I make a motion to accept the policies as stated and revised. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Rebecca. We're all caught up with our policies that we have from WASB at this point. So we're anticipating getting some additional ones here fairly quickly, and then we'll set up the next meeting with Ted and move those forward. So at this point, I don't really have a time frame for our next one. Um, if they come quicker, we'll contact you and see if we can keep it moving. Otherwise, it'll probably be in May. That's all we have this morning. Uh, I'll take the motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.